Congratulations to you all. Thank you, one new um, nomination. I mean, there is so much to unpack, but John, this decision to take season three, right? As we're saying, fresh, exciting, so much fun to watch. Take it out of the Arconia and, you know, make a show within a show. Where did this idea come from? Oh, God. Your mic. <laughs> Your mic. Are you. Your mic. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Now we can. Sorry, thank you. Um, so nice to be here, by the way. Thank you for doing this. Because um, I'm here to celebrate them. And I'm thrilled to do it. Um, uh, it's an amazing group. So I think, yeah, I, I can't remember when it hit other than just knowing that we wanted to lean into a story that Oliver Putnam, Martin Short's character, was going to be sort of at the center of, and we wanted to do two, two, two things. Give him a romantic storyline, and give him a drive that felt particularly Oliver Putnam. And knowing at the end of season two that we had a death happen on the stage uh, for his Broadway return that aborted everything that he was dreaming of, uh, because of the collapse of Ben Glenroy, um, that it felt like, oh, how does he try and get that show back up and running? And what would Oliver Putnam do? And that coinciding with Meryl Streep <laughs> miraculously saying she was going to join the show um, became a moment where we all just, uh, we all, I did. I, I will admit that I did this, but I, thought, okay, well, Oliver would truly make a musical out of this straight play, old chestnut of a, you know, mystery. Um, and then when Meryl joined, I thought, well, you don't get many chances with someone like that, and if you're going to have that chance, why not triple down <laughs> and ask her to sort of sing and perform, and like, then came this amazing collection of people that uh, joined in uh, composers and choreographers and production designers and everyone else who could help support this insane idea. And off we went with crossed fingers and a huge amount of talent. And Patrick, I mean, we've spoken about your incredible world building. When you find out that John is going to, you know, build, you're going to have to build a musical stage and you're going to have a few more apartments such as you know Loretta's what was that like for you especially you've got actually got a theatrical background so talk about getting that script and working with John okay hi everyone uh, it was it was really wonderful news to hear that we would uh, try to carry execute the Broadway musical because I did have the theater background that's where my design roots started so it was really sort of nice to be able to you don't get to deploy those skills very often in TV or film, um, so it was it was kind of great, and um, just, just it was sort of a wild journey at the very beginning because more, I think I've said this before. Normally, uh, if you, if you're a director designer doing a musical, you would have a book and a score and a lot of things to respond to to inform what you're and be inspired by what your design would be. And uh, all they could do was talk to John and say, John, what the hell is that? Like, there is no score in the book and, you know, you me. <laughs> so it was pretty good. And thankfully, we had really great conversations and, uh, and John was able to just describe, you know, plot points of like, well, these are quite, you know, we will need a lighthouse. It's going to take place in Nova Scotia. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's a good start. So, uh, you know, so it, really from John's descriptions of, um, of plot points uh, that, will, you know, I began my research and was able to sort of approach it and just sort of forget about the fact that I'd never heard of uh, one bar of music or, or anything. And, um, and I thought about it afterwards, and I think I'm happy, you know, maybe it's good that I didn't have those other sources, and then I could just go on, you know, on the research and, uh, and you know, do sketches for John and get on the same page, so. Uh, but it was, that was, it was, uh, it was great to integrate theater life into TV. Can I just add that Patrick is a quiet miracle worker, and he, um, Honestly, uh, he, uh, I was sort of 
deep in with writers and deep in with composers and, and working out what you what we had to work out, as he's saying, a whole musical, like a real sensible straight play that then became a musical with a real story that reflected the themes of the story we were telling in real time with our characters and all the workers in the building. So it was a complicated process and I was deep in it with them. And Patrick has the lovely quality of, I, I would realize I'm on set or wherever I was, and Patrick, I would not realize that he was just hovering over my shoulder at times. At various moments, I'd be in meetings or over a Zoom or something, and I would just feel him there. And I would think, what, is that Patrick over there? Right behind me? And I realized, and then he had just one simple question, like, John, do we have any more information about the Nova Scotian Lighthouse? <laughs> and I said, well, not, oh, oh, I'm not sharing it with you. So it was, it was, he was, as I say, a quiet miracle, because a lot of times he was going on very little information that I would try and impart, but, um, but I, I was always stunned, honestly, because it, he has a way of going so far beyond anything that I think is possible um, always with these stunning sets he does. Uh, so anyway, but, and his team. Uh, I have learned some um, tips from the show about my own mystery solving to source out information. <laughs> Clever. Well, the, the other thing that I do want to talk to you about, Patrick, is the detail those sets, like I've had conversations with you about the Easter eggs that you're putting in, that you know, might the audience might not notice the first time around. Like, talk about Loretta's apartment, you know, and obviously the little Meryl Street Easter eggs that you put in that were nods to her career. And they're sort of uh, endless. <laughs> uh, honestly, the uh, our, my decorator Rich Murray was um, beside himself with putting in, it's kind of one of his favorite pastimes, and so just putting in uh, lots of Easter eggs, really, and he, he just thoroughly researched Loretta's, you know, Meryl's career, of which there's obviously a lot there. Uh, and the deeper you dig, the, you know, there's just phenomenal things throughout her whole performance career, and Paul Rudd's as well, so uh, he really did all the homework on them, and um, he would just make parallel things. He, you know, would take something from Kramer versus Kramer and like, oh, we'll just have a very similar refrigerator with the same thing, you know, or, I mean, there's just, you know, like, oh, I found a t-shirt from Merrill's mother's favorite restaurant in the village, or whatever, <laughs> you know, like all this crazy things. So uh, just end this early upholster a piece of furniture in a fabric that was, you know, reminiscent of, of some feature film. Can I interject again? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've, got, I've got anecdotes and stories. <laughs> yeah. So just to say at the end of um, the, the uh, at the end of our shooting with Meryl on that set, um, she hadn't known that they had laid in these Easter eggs in honor of her whole career on this little apartment set. So I thought better not to share that until we were towards the end. And, and so on that last day after we were finished, I said, can we walk you through? And, we, and Patrick and Rich and everybody walked her through each detail of, of all of the intricate sort of homages to her career. And she got very emotional about it. I, I, and the realization of what was happening as she was looking at it all. And then the best was, um, I said, you know, if you want any of this stuff, I was thinking, you know, she has a little keepsake or something, and she basically took it all. <laughs> really, like, took everything. Right, like I could still use that area rug, you know. <laughs> she left the rug. Abby, your work on the costumes with Dana this season is so great. I mean, here's the thing that you had to do. Again, it's very similar to what Patrick and all of you is you're creating costumes for your characters off stage and also when they're on stage. Like, how did you navigate that and what conversations did you all have? And also, you know, you, you're working with your fellow departments to make sure you're not putting somebody in white against a white background. I mean, we had similar conversations with John where we were like, like Patrick, we were like, what is the play? 
Like, <laughs> 1940s Nova Scotia, got it. Okay, we can, we'll work with that. And then Patrick would sometimes come to our office and be like, what do you know that I don't? And he would like tell us some of it. Um, and we just would share information. And um, I mean, I think as this, one of the best things about this show and this crew is the collaborative spirit that, that John sort of really encourages and supports. Um, yeah, I think we're, it's a really wonderful collaborative team that we have. And I am. But yeah, for us, the best thing was getting to just put sequins all over everything. So, <laughs> Dana and I have never met a, met a sparkle that we didn't love. So um, we had fun. Yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Cause, yeah. Well, what was the most challenging, you know, outfit to put together for, for both of you? Um, well, uh, I think figuring out how to, I mean, Meryl's nanny costume, um, having that built and making it work for then what we realized was going to be a very physical scene between her and Paul, um, that she and Paul came into our office to show us what they've been working on. You brought them up, like you'd just done a rehearsal with them and they like came in and they were like, okay, so I shove you and then this. And we were like, holy, that skirt's not gonna work then. So like it was reworking some stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I think the, the challenge really was, was making the musical look realistic, but without taking away any of the fun for us. So, um, you know, we wanted it to look really good on camera, but we also wanted it to look like it could sort of be a real Broadway show and not just this huge sparkle, you know, like, yeah, I think for us that was the thing. It was pulling it back when we needed to. <laughs> um, there were two fabrics that we left that we were both obsessed with in the swatches and we were like, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much. So, and that we're still a little devastated. Right? <laughs> but yeah, that was, I think, yeah, just the, the whole of that. Maybe one day there'll be a full musical and you'll be able to use those. Yes. I think that's coming, isn't it, John? Yeah, it's next. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, can I throw in another anecdote? Okay. We love anecdotes, right? Is that okay? Yeah. I, I know. I'll, I don't want to take the whole thing. But, uh, but I, I can't help it. There are funny, interesting things. A lot of them are Meryl Streep ones. But just to say, one of the most memorable days ever uh, was when we all kind of met Meryl in person for the first day was, was her fitting. And Dana Covarrubias, uh, our unbelievably brilliant costume designer uh, had been saying, I can't believe I'm going to have it. I'm like, I don't, shh, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. It's going to be very good. It's fun. It's exciting. Um, and, and Meryl had just had a granddaughter, uh, like I think two days before the fitting. So we were thinking, oh, she may not make it because she was very involved and wanting to be around in the hospital and everything. And everything's fine. But she showed up. <laughs> Clearly, she hadn't slept for many hours. And um, I was thinking, oh, this will be really quick. This will be a nothing. And um, two things happened. Uh, Dana showed the collection of what she was thinking for Meryl. And she was nervous, you know. And I've never seen anything like it. The costume fitting went four and a half hours. And every detail, every fabric, every choice, down to buttons, down to the way she wore rings, um, uh, the rings she was going to wear. It was a study, and it was a real master class in watching someone find character, search character, feel the yes and no of it all. And then by the end of it, she said to Dana, well, you're clearly a genius. And I was like, that was, and Dana just, and, and then <laughs> Dana for the next four days, did you hear, did I hear that right? <laughs> but, um, but that was an amazing day, and then as, as Abby is saying, it was amazing also then to watch the work between her and Paul for this final number they were going to do. Meryl choreographed it, basically, along with John Carafa. And it was some, because, you know, you never know what's going to be too much for, you know, we're going to be shooting this many, many times, and there are about, I want to say, 30 steps up the side of that lighthouse. 
and the whole number is choreographed up that lighthouse path. And she kept pushing it, and she kept saying, no more physical, this, that, this, that, and both of them were into it. So, and then it was so much about those costumes and finding the ways in which they could feel comfortable doing all of that many times over, and that was just athletic and amazing to watch that uh, combination of, of fluidity with, with, you know, wardrobe and with um, actors. So, anyway, is that an anecdote? All right. Okay. I think we are all really lucky the ways a lot of the elements came together because even like that aspect of the lighthouse and our first conversation, you said, you did say, okay, Nova Scotia Lighthouse is going to need some rocks because we're going to find a dead body in the rocks. And I think there should be a staircase because I think someone will sing a song on a staircase. But it was a little, the information was like a little loosey goosey and like, okay, staircase, right? You know, st staircase should be on the outside of the lighthouse, not on the inside. Okay, okay. Uh, and then, but it was it basically had the thing designed and built and developed. My goal was getting as tall a stair, um, you know, a lighthouse that could be on the stage and um, in, in the theater that we were choosing. Uh, so the, it, which was a very large theater, large stage, and it, so it could be very high, which meant a lot of steps to the staircase. And then, uh, you know, and this really hadn't processed like late seventy-some-year-old Meryl and Paul and like what? Did, oh, and they're all, they're gonna, you know, like it was too late when I'm learning, like they're gonna fight and sing on the staircase. And I was like, if I'd really known that, I would have maybe, maybe tried to do a different staircase, you know? <laughs> you know, and it's like, what do I do when they say this is too steep and it's already built and, you know? Uh, so it just, it, it all uh, sort of worked out. And then I immediately was going to you two and, uh, and like, what shoes was Mara wearing? Because, like, have you seen this staircase? <laughs> yeah, there was a bunch of times Patrick was like, the staircase might not be that safe, so. Like, what are they doing? Is she wearing heels? And normally, like, with John, I would, or, you know, with John Karoff, I would, like, he would work with the choreographer from the beginning, you know, with plotting out, you know, to where you could block things on the stage. And uh, we just didn't really logistically have that opportunity, but thankfully John was like, I can work backwards from, you know, don't worry, I'll choreograph to what the scenery is. I was like, okay, that's good, because it's done now. <laughs> John, talk about working backwards and how much time you had to put that together. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, yeah, it's interesting as a choreographer because, you know, all these guys, Patrick and Abby and, and Dana, they're there the whole production, but I'm coming in for certain specific moments. So I'm always trying to jump in and sort of get into the flow of the production and sort of, you know, join the party. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't very unusual to have to set ahead of time. And, and uh, what was fun is that we had the, some kind of crazy outline of the musical at the beginning of the season that could sort of give us the tone and, and the structure of it. But, I mean, I just have, John wants to throw it to us, but I have to just say, like, the whole experience for me was just so full of joy and ease, and I was always kind of blown away by, like, he's got, he's amazing, he's got Meryl Streep, he's got Steve Martin, he's got, and somehow this is all happening so easily, I'm like, how is that happening when I'm spending three days on whether the hand's here or here, and there's this massive production happening around me, so um, that was my experience. I want to talk to Ariel and Jameson about, you know, your incredible, the makeup and the hair that you had to do. Um, you know, talk about how you navigated that for looks this season and, yeah, especially for for the, that last number. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, well, for the, we, again, had the same, I guess, not a problem, but an issue <laughs> of, what are what is everybody going to be wearing? Um, especially, there was a big question mark looming over our crab people, which I thought maybe was going to be the hardest costume you guys had to build. <laughs> How are we going to get eight legs on this thing and have them walk and dance? Um, and also the mer creatures. Uh, and so that was there was a lot of question marks with that. And um, I know that it took me a lot of iterations of makeup tests to sort of find to land on something that worked. Um, and to make it a little bit scary, a little bit fun, dramatic for the theater. Um, and I think in the end, it all came together. <laughs> I, <will laughs> Definitely. Say, I don't think long hair goes well with sequins, but we
we worked it out eventually. <laughs> But um, it was fun to do. I think Ashley Park probably had the most like 1940s look of anyone. So that was fun to do some like the 1940s looks and like hard parts on the guys. And um, even our trio, you know, was like part of the show. And Selena was like sequined up too. And right, she had sort of her glamorous opening night makeup look. So it was a little bit elevated from her everyday look. And one of my favorites was Linda Eman, who played Donna. She came in. And I think Cher's mom had just passed away, and that was her vision for what that character wanted to look like. So I, I think that's great when an actor comes in and just like really has like a vision or an idea of what they want to look like. So I think for me, that was one of the most fun looks. Yeah, it was super collaborative because John was super, super on board with that. <laughs> you know, like, this is an amazing thing. Linda wants to look like Cher's mom. And then, you know, we pulled up a bunch of pictures and the hair was really specific and the makeup was really specific and then finding how that was gonna work on Linda was really fun. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna go and look at pictures of Georgia Holt now, because you can see it now, right? That's, that's, there you go. See, the things you're learning today. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, one of the things that we had in this production, which was really unusual to me, was we had a lot of time in the theater to work out the kinks. So we had a full day where we went in, there was no shooting happening. We got to try out the, uh, some of the costumes and the set and the stairs, and, and that was such a luxury, and it really sort of helped cement the musical in a big way. Um, I want to say one thing about the, um, the dream sequence, because I'm really proud of that. I felt like that was such an amazing moment for me as a choreographer, because John and I were talking, and he's like, well, you know, it's sort of based on all that jazz, and there's songs from all that jazz, but I don't know if we want to use those, and can we even afford them? And I said, you don't need a song. It's like Fosse would make these kinds of things all the time without um, without, uh, without a song. He'd just like, there'd be like oohs and ahs and gasps and rhythm and percussion. He'd go in the room and make this thing. I said, Let, just give me a text, give me Siddhartha's uh, theme, and we'll go and we'll play around and make it. And for me, you know, being in that sort of, it was almost like being in the writer's room for a minute with him. And to be able to sort of make something from scratch was like really exciting. It was fantastic. Again, that's the kind of thing John Garofa would do and everybody would do. You, you realize you're, you're thinking these things up, you're working to try and make them happen within production, and everybody else is going off into their own little worlds and, and doing things actively. And I would get a videotape back from John working with three incredible dancers in a New York space and, and working out a Fosse number that was a knockout. And then the balance, it's always the balance, and everybody's saying the same thing too, and that's What's beautiful about working with people and getting the opportunity to do a show for many seasons is, is you have a collaboration that forms an understanding and a patience with me when I don't have all the answers. And, and then you have a way in which there's great trust with people that, um, I get emotional about this because it's true, but um, you get uh, the reliance you have on everyone to do that job in such a sublime and spectacular way as they do. But everyone's thinking about it. That's the thing that moves me so much, is everyone's thinking about it in their own space, in their own head, and creating that own thing. And then when they come back and they show you what, what they've done, it's almost ridiculous, but it's it's so beyond what, what I could have dreamed about. And, and then, then it's really about making those final decisions because they've done the thing that's the furthest point with it, and then you pull it back a bit, like what you were saying, Abby, and it's, it's always about sort of like keeping it within just on the edge. We're a very theatrical show. This was a very theatrical <laughs> season, and, and everyone understood that, John as well, and it's like everyone sort of finding their way to go, this is the bam of it all, and then we're going to pull it back to, you know, within the context of reality and keep it grounded within only what is in the building, so it felt like of a piece. I love that. Um, so last question for all of you. I mean, you know, what's so great is that you, you work together, but then, you know, you, you don't see the final product till it till it drops or unless you get screeners. What was it like for you seeing the entire season and all your work come together? Give me a sentence or two. John, I'm going to start with your work. Um, you know, the, the one, the thing that I was thinking of was your, when you're talking about that question is how I think how all of us probably really enjoy being part of a team. Um, 
I think you can't be in this if, if you don't like being part of a cog in the wheel. And there's something really moving to me about, about contributing my part, my, my sort of um, expertise. Um, so seeing it is just was, you know, we'd seen it when we shot it, so there was no big surprises. Uh, but see the rest of everybody's work is just really like, oh my God, what Dana did and what Patrick did, you know, that's what's exciting. James, some more back to you. I think for me, more than even watching the season was sitting in that theater and watching Meryl sing live, Steve sing live, Marty sing live, and like over and over again, and you're just like sitting there, and you can't believe it's happening and you're getting to watch this. And you're getting paid for it. Like it's a, it's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, love it, Aria. Yeah, I, I definitely have to second Jameson's uh, sentiment. I mean, it was pretty incredible showing up. I think we were at the theater for two weeks at the end, just watching a Broadway show. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty great. I mean, I also think what's really nice seeing the show when it comes out is what shots they've they've chosen, how everything's been cut together, and I'm always just impressed because I don't hang out with the editors, I don't hang out with the, you know, what's happening in Foley or any of those behind the scenes things, and it really brings a whole other dimension to all of the work that we're doing collaboratively on the day. Abby? I think um, seeing the, because the cast is so big, and it's not, we had so many new characters, not just the musical cast. We had Donna and Cliff and, um, and Dickie and Loretta, obviously. Um, I think there, throughout the season, we had costumes that we were just really excited about and that had nothing to do with like, the big thing at the end. Um, and seeing those on camera, because at that point, you'd sort of almost forgotten about them. And then seeing them in the final edit <coughs> <laughs> right now thinking about Howard's raincoat, um, his little yellow raincoat, um, and then Cliff's giant sleeves in three weeks um, that I was positive John wasn't going to go for. And then he was like, no, that's, yeah, I like that one. Because they were just, they went before. Um, but yeah, that, those, seeing those things in the final was Love it. There are some costumes outside on display too, so make sure you have a look at the detail. Um, and Patrick, what about for you? It, it, seeing the whole piece come together is what's, <clears throat> excuse me, is really exciting. The between editing and scoring, in particular, um, you know, I'll see dailies and I'll try to see as much as I can on the floor. But um, um, the whole piece really does speak to everybody's collaboration and and. I really enjoy being a visual storyteller, so I like to do my part, but it's not its not a singular vision without every other department, you know? And um, and so to see, it's so gratifying to see like when something works and, and, uh, and uh, like, and it's working because of all of our talking and working things out and, and there's always some, you know, waning some things or a gamble or some things that maybe look like they were coordinated more than they, you know, it's just good luck or whatever, but uh, it, um, it's just it was an, uh, amazing to see it sort of all put together like that. Um, yeah. And John, in a sentence or two, what did you learn about yourself this season working with this team? I Because i got to get the second panel going. He's like, jazz. No, I mean, I, I can't even. I mean, I learned so much about, uh, first of all, how like I, I knew what I, I was asking and I knew what this season was asking of all of the great every team member of, of all of these brilliant department heads and, and, and it, it 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 meant everyone stepping up and we all really I felt that you stepped up and then and then as you were saying when you put the show together in post with our amazing editors with our amazing composers and, and sound people, everyone involved, um, you're thinking about those things. And, and then it's about taking all of those pieces that did not exist before you had this idea and what they created and then putting that together in a way that makes it feel like a real universe within a show um, and, 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 and making it all sort of organic to, to the reality we've, we've established. And, 
that is a process I've come to learn mm -hmm. so much about and learn the value of in honoring the, the work that comes from literally, you know, blueprints and and design and fabric and like amazing work every day in those makeup and hair chairs and, and with what Joan is doing with the physical and the bodies and being able to sort of suss out these amazing actors we have and, and finding ways to sort of stretch them while also fulfill what they can do like nobody else. So that's where it just feels like we're sitting in the luckiest perch um, with this show. Uh, and, and it's just a joy to be there every day because everybody's of the same thinking, um, how lucky we are to be there and what a grand time we're having. Amazing. Well, I want to thank you all for sharing insight into your process. We're going to dive into the post-production. I'll see you next. Stay seated and then we'll get